Hello everybody, this is Havoc, back with another strategy title list, this time going over Gamescom. Understanding that the event is still going, there's already a great list of strategy games announced in the first two days. Should any other games match the quality in this video, I'll be sure to hop on that for next Monday. Turning back to this video, the games list will vary. You'll see City Builders, Grand Strategy, 4X, Historical Space, and Fantasy. There is no ranking system, just a handy little list for you to discover. So as always, let's dive in. First on today's list is one of the more mysterious 4X strategy games announced at Gamescom with its pretty bizarre trailer, Humankind. Developed by the endless veterans Amplitude Studios and published by their parent company Sega, Humankind is a unique and probably more accurate representation of history than Civilization, the game most of the community is comparing it to. What makes it different is instead of choosing one faction for the entire game, Every new age you go into will have you pick and integrate another faction into yours. By the end of the game, you have a melting pot of six different cultures that makes up your own unique civilization, something we haven't seen in a strategy game, but like I said, is probably more historically accurate. This cultural blend could produce some really interesting campaigns, as each faction's traits builds on top of the previous one. Imagine having like a medieval European style cathedral, but with ancient Egyptian pillars instead of Gothic or maybe having a phalanx unit that's actually dressed in the style of an Aztec Jaguar warrior. I have no idea if this is possible in the game, but the thought of it has me very excited. Speaking of military units, battles are more along the Endless Legends side, with campaign map armies consisting of multiple units on a single hex, which then opens up to a broader battle map once engaged. If you're looking for a more modern comparison, think of the army set up in Age of Wonders Planetfall. No idea if we'll get heroes or not as an endless legend or even in Planetfall, but with the crossover of different cultures, it would be cool to see some unique heroes thrown into that equation as well. Not much else is really known about the game thus far except for a release date sometime in 2020. This is easily a game I'll be keeping track of though, as there's just too much potential in it to not keep track of it. Kerbal Space 2 was a surprise to see at Gamescom considering that the latest DLC for the first title released only a few months ago. In development by Star Theory Games and published by Private Division, the sequel to easily the best spaceflight simulation game is banking on the popularity of its predecessor as a launch pad for its own success. KSP2 is being fully redesigned from the ground up with improved UI and better tutorials, new technology for better parts and different fuels, the ability to create colonies in single player and in multiplayer, and even the potential for interstellar travel should you be able to conquer the aforementioned feats of space engineering. It looks like things are about to get a lot more intense and cover a much wider range of space exploration with this second game, though the team has mentioned that players ranging from your simple novice to experts will be able to pick it up quickly and figure it all out. Having only gotten to the moon in my first game, I'm 100% in that novice beginner category, and while all the new features do seem a bit daunting to me, I'm hoping I'll be able to pick it up quickly, learn and grasp everything I need to to get my space program going. I'm also hoping on multiplayer being pretty well designed and functional off the bat, so I have a few friends who are pretty good at the game, and I'd love to piggyback, I'm, I mean play with them as we take over the galaxy. Kerbal Space Program 2 also has no specific release date, just sometime in 2020. This one's already been announced, but we got a shiny new trailer for the event. The Settlers is the latest city building real-time strategy game in a series that's been churning out games for over 25 years. Developed by Blue Byte and published by their parent Ubisoft, the settler story picks up with a group of settlers forced to leave their homeland after a mysterious earthquake. They'll need to discover new lands to settle, gathering resources, building up settlements, recruiting heroes and armies to fight known enemies and the unknown alike. Graphically, I'm immediately reminded of Fable and Warcraft 3 has a much more playful fantasy vibe to it. Not to say that it looks bad, after all, my generation grew up with both of those series. It's a great art style that fits the genre and the theme of what the Settler series has seemingly always gone for. Once you get your settlements built up and expanding, I've no doubts that the natural city spread will look very visually pleasing, giving off that vibrant medieval city feel. To rebrand and bring the game up to current expectations, it looks like the Settlers will have multiplayer as well as co-op campaign missions. Co-op campaign missions in a strategy game are a big hit or miss, so it'll be interesting to see how they decide to tackle that aspect in this one, and it's something I'll have to try out for review purposes should I get the opportunity to do so. But if the success of Anno 1800 is any sort of indicator of the quality we're going to see from Blue Byte with the Settlers, then this will undoubtedly be a game you'll want to play. Keeping with the trend of Gamescom announcements, the Settlers will look towards a vague 2020 release date, hopefully sometime in the spring. 
Port Royal is a series that I know by name only, and after some quick researching, I found it an interesting mix of strategy genres. Port Royal 4 is being developed by Gaming Minds and published by Calypso like its predecessor back in 2012. In this 17th century Caribbean-based strategy game, you will juggle two primary roles. First, the trading simulation strategy side, personally in charge of your own trade system, manually buying different products in various ports and trading them throughout the sea on your own ship. If it follows Port Royal 3, eventually you'll be able to expand your fleet and design automatic routes your ships can take to lighten that micromanagement mode. Sticking with this trade simulator side is an aspect of war where you'll engage in turn-based naval battles to protect your own ships while I'm sure also disrupting your rival's own trade routes. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any games currently that have a turn-based naval battle system. I'm a bit skeptical on this part of the game, but we will likely see something about it at a future date. The flip side of that coin is a city builder. After all, you can't expect those cities and towns to just make all sorts of goods on their own, right? As a governor of these colonies, you'll need to build and expand them, bringing in more colonists and developing the towns to create various goods and no doubt more luxurious commodities for your aforementioned fleet to buy and sell across the map. There's no information on how many resources will be in the game, or even the economical side of this city builder, but if it's like Port Royal 3, its tile-based city building will be a creative way to develop your cities. Strategy games have come a long way since the days of Port Royal 3. It is a strange combination of genres that in my honest opinion doesn't jive well with the current trends of strategy gaming. With Anno 1800 taking a similar approach to trade and expansion, but in a much more in-depth way, it'll take some eye-catching approaches to all aspects of this game to make it a success. Port Royal 4 has a 2020 release date. Last on the top list of Gamescom announcements is Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. Knights of Honor 2 is being developed by Black Sea Games and published by THQ Nordic. This grand strategy title only has a few minutes of actual gameplay, and in that time you'll quickly draw from the footage and narration that this sounds very much like Crusader Kings 2 meets Total War. The real-time campaign map spreads across Europe and into the Middle East, where you'll cultivate your family through the generations, dealing with various characters and officials inside your kingdom and outside of it. Should you so desire, you can then fight your armies in real-time battle form in an isometric viewpoint command style. Could this be the Paradox slash Total War combined game that we've so desperately desired for ages? I hope we get to find out more soon. Knights of Honor 2 is of course due for a 2020 release. And that wraps up my top strategy titles announced at Gamescom. Let me know what you think about the games I briefly discussed in the comments section down below. 2020 will be a very interesting time for us strategy gamers, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the titles mentioned. Also, stay on this video for the honorable mentions from Gamescom. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next one. You will have to fight to reach us. Here comes the pain train. Will you take up arms? Will you fight for our people? Strengthen your resolve and fight the darkness that aims to consume. But this time, we're vigilant and we'll fight. A week ago, I got into Chicago. And as soon as I did, I started handing out my calling card. It wasn't long before I was building an empire and making contacts. I had a few ups and downs along the way. Eddie and Marie fell in love and ran off. And sure, Tammy's the best shot in town. If she doesn't show up drunk, that is. And Jack? <laughs> no one had messed with Jack. Old Ronnie didn't take too well to my way of doing business.
Now he thinks he's got me pegged. The Empire! Come and get it. Oh, see!